Hello, I'm Kayser and welcome to Moose Reads. Before I get started, I want to say that the opinions that I give here are my own opinions. They are extremely subjective. If I dislike a book, it is not a reflection on the author and it is not a reflection on people who do like it. Different people have different tastes and that's okay. Today, I will be reviewing Remnants of Filth Volume 3 by Robao Bujiro. This is a queer fantasy romance. The description says, Gu Mong is determined to turn over a new leaf and prove to Mo Ji that he's not the ruthless man he once was. Yet as his old memories return, the shadow of the traitorous General Gu seems to haunt him, raising questions to which he has no answers, both about his defection from Changhua and his past entanglements with Mo Ji. As Mo Ji and Gu Mong struggle toward a fragile truce, the pair are summoned for an emergency rescue mission to an island inhabited by demons. But this island is full of buried secrets, including one that may unravel everything Mo Ji and Gu Mong thought they knew about the past. Five stars. Honestly, every one of these books just gets better and better. I love them so much. This book did hurt, though. The delicious anguish that has me chewing through each new installment has really ramped up this time and crushed me in the best way. Absolutely would recommend. I never have much to say about these. I'm very sorry for that. I still haven't figured out how to really talk about the things I love in books. There is more I want to say about this one, but it's all spoilers all the way down. Thus, if you don't like spoilers, now is the time to pause or close the video. For everyone else, let's talk details. This book opened on a pure gut wrench, so I can't say it didn't clearly signal what I was in for. Still, it was awful to see how desperately Gu Mong wants to win back Moji's trust and redeem himself for the wrongs he's now convinced he committed. I'm really hoping we revisit this sequence of events now that Gu Mong has his memories back to see what he has to say about it. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to. Partly because I'm more and more convinced of future reveals that would make this conversation impossible, but also because original flavor Gu Mong would almost certainly lie and be flippant about the whole thing, so we'd never get a straight answer. I'm starting to have some serious questions about the relationship between Murong Chuyi and Zhang Yeshui. I'm not convinced they've always hated each other as much as everyone thinks. The more I learn about why Gu Mong defected, the less I can hold it against him. You know, aside from the part where he stabbed Moji in the heart. That was uncalled for. But what's really frustrating about the fact that he had every right to defect is that I'm almost entirely sure he didn't, actually. I kind of had my suspicions in the first book that the Emperor may have ordered him to infiltrate the Lao Kingdom for some reason. I couldn't entirely work out the logistics of it, but it seemed a little off that the Emperor didn't execute him upon his return. Sure, they'd like to squeeze secrets out of him, but there's no reason to suspect he would give them up if he miraculously remembered them. I couldn't help but feel like the Emperor probably wanted to learn something specific. And the details this volume gave us just made me more sure. Still not 100%, but we're certainly getting there. Moshi's reasoning for why the Emperor wanted Gu Mong to feel helpless and alone in order to force him to defect makes perfect sense, but I think it's more that he didn't want to risk Moji discovering Gu Mong's secret mission. Also, like, the closed-off area on Warrior Souls Mountain definitely has the 70,000 graves. That's the price of Gu Mong's cooperation. That's why the mysterious visitor brought Gu Mong there before he defected. I think sending Gu Mong to deliver the head was just a convenient and cruel way to get Gu Mong out of the country so he could slip away easily. Still no clue why Gu Mong stabbed Moji though. I can explain all his other behavior by him trying to save Moji in the same way Lu Zongxing was trying to save him, denying him the future he wants for the future he thinks will make Moji happiest. But that kind of falls apart if you kill the guy and all indications are that Moji should have died when Gu Mong stabbed him. I do also believe the Emperor is a lying snake, by the way. He sent Gu Mong on whatever mission because he felt confident that he could get what he wanted and ensure that slaves were never allowed to rise above their station again. 
Whether or not Gu Mong thought there was a path home after his mission is still up in the air, but I'm leaning towards no. Given that I think all of that, I feel so bad for Moji. He's putting all this blame on himself for not being there for Gu Mong when there was never anything he could have done that would have changed anything. And now Gu Mong has his memories back and is being mean for what I'm sure are very stupid reasons. These books are truly ruthless. I love them so much. I can't believe I have to wait for July to read the next one. Look forward to it. That's all I have to say about Remnants of Filth Volume 3. If you like this video, I hope you'll watch more in the future. Thanks for watching this one. Bye!